the in the word of God in the book of uh, Colossians I want to just share with you very briefly uh, it's Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 we'll read very briefly verse 13 through 17 Amen. When you're there, say amen. amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. Amen. Let's read those uh, verses together. Let's lift our voice together and read those verses. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. For the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, by him were all things created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Come on, somebody just shout. Uh, in this place, just shout, deliver. deliver. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Nothing, nothing the enemy has tried, enemy tried to use against me, use against me. Will, be will be successful. Come on, shout, neighbor, neighbor. I, am I am delivered. Deliver. Come on, look at somebody else. Come on, look at someone else and ask them, did you hear what I said? <laughs> Tell them, I am, I am delivered. delivered. Amen. Come on, you can take your seat in this place. We praise God in this place. Amen. We bless God for Amen. We are what God says that we are. Amen. Isn't the Lord faithful? We praise him uh, for his goodness in this place. We honor the Lord. Thank God for uh, these uh, incredible uh, pastors here. We thank God for them. Amen. To uh, our first assistant, Pastor uh, Daryl Johnson, who is worship leader tonight. We praise God for him. And uh, his wonderful wife, First Lady Johnson, we thank God uh, for her tonight as well, to uh, my second assistant, Pastor Benjamin, uh, who's done a tremendous job uh, tonight in leading us uh, in, uh, in giving and sharing tonight. Uh, we bless God for him and to uh, First Lady Benjamin, we thank God for, uh, for them and to... Uh, Pastor Johnson, amen, and uh, his tremendous wife, we bless the Lord for them, and Pastor Maxwell and First Lady Maxwell, who did, uh, First Lady did a tremendous job in uh, leading the uh, financial literacy uh, seminar this week. Uh, we praise God for her. We heard Pastor Maxwell testify about what a tremendous woman of God she is in helping to uh, to keep things uh, in order financially. And she shared some of those insights with the saints uh, on this week, those uh, that came. Uh, and we thank God for the, uh, the gifting of this woman of God. And to uh, Pastor Davis and First Lady Davis, we bless God for, uh, for them. And uh, to uh, Pastor Raymond and First Lady Raymond, amen. These are tremendous uh, saints to work with. We bless God for, uh, for these men of God. We thank God for what uh, the Lord has, uh, has done and what he is doing to Pastor Williams. And I don't know that I see him there in First Lady Williams. Uh, we praise God for these saints of God. Uh, it's just a blessing uh, to be among the saints of God. I thank God for, uh, for our district missionary in her absence. We are praying for her. Uh, we certainly pray for this woman of God, 96 years old, and, uh, 
Amen. I think I got that right. 96, 95. She's 95 years old. Amen. Uh, we are praying for our mother. Amen. That God will raise her up, restore her health, and bring her back. Amen. To the house of God. We thank the Lord uh, for her. And uh, thank God for my wife. I asked my wife if she would stand. Amen. Bless the Lord uh, for my wife tonight. Thank God for how faithful the Lord is. And to these wonderful mothers uh, that are here, we bless the Lord for each of them uh, from all over the, uh, the district. Uh, it has been a blessing. I want to share with you uh, tonight, and for those who uh, have been uh, so faithful, I want to appreciate each of you tonight for being here. Uh, Amen. We never take for granted anyone's presence at any uh, service and always thank God for uh, you coming. Amen. I know that God's only concern is always his people. Uh, so I believe tonight uh, your presence here indicates uh, that God has a purpose and a plan for our being here because he's concerned about uh, every individual that's in this place. The Bible said in Psalm 38 that he will perfect that which concerns us. And which means he'll complete it. He will bring to fruition the promises that he has uh, upon our lives. Amen. Now tonight as we've learned this week, we come tonight with an expectation that God's going to do something uh, miraculous. And we just believe that God will do exactly what he said. In uh, the word tonight, uh, as we consider this text, uh, this epistle of Paul uh, to uh, the Colossians, uh, we look at the fact that we are, as the word of God implies, we are heirs uh, of the king through our faith. Amen. It is not just something that you walk into, but we are heirs uh, of the king through faith. Amen. We, uh, we see and we understand as we talk about this tonight that really faith is the key to our receiving any promise that God has for our lives. And what I want to do is, uh, one, just to talk for a moment about the benefit uh, of faith. Not only does faith make us heirs uh, to all that God has, but it sets us free from all that the devil has <laughs> in store for us. John 8, uh, 32, verse that we uh, quote often, it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Uh, just a little further, you see in John 8, 36, it says, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, then it says, you shall be free indeed. Can somebody just shout, I'm free. I'm free. Amen. We believe what the word says. Now, the power of darkness, though, is a tremendous obstacle uh, to our freedom. The enemy doesn't like uh, what God has made provision for in your life. And the devil seeks to blind us from this truth that God speaks to us about in John 8.32. Amen. He wants to keep us from seeing who we are in Jesus Christ and what we can accomplish in the power of the God of glory. Uh, now there are several things uh, as we move through this that I want you to look at. In the verse 13, it talks about uh, the power of darkness, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, amen, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. When it talks about uh, the power of darkness, which is the first thing uh, that we will deal with. And then I want to tell you about the possibility of deliverance. Come on, somebody say the power of darkness. Darkness refers to sin. The Bible said that men love darkness or they love sin more than they love light. Light represents righteousness and darkness represents sin. So it says men love sin more than men love righteousness, is what the word says. 
uh, the Bible declares that in John 3.19. The reason is that men's e uh, deeds are evil. That's why men love sin more than men love righteousness. Amen. You know, the word of God is so consistent in, uh, in sharing this truth. It, it, it declares this, that broad is the way, amen, that leads to destruction. But it says narrow is the way. Amen. That leads, it says, to eternal life. Why? Because uh, folk love sin more than folk love righteousness, is what the word says. Huh? And it said, listen, we don't want to see anything uh, wrong in most things that we do. Amen. Not only do we do wrong, but we also try to justify the wrong that we're doing. Amen. That's when you love darkness more than you love light. First, it says men love darkness. And then secondly, sin holds many folk in bondage. Our sins blind us and intensifies the darkness that we find ourselves in. Sin blinds us and then it intensifies the darkness that we're in. Now, it's all right when you declare. Amen. Uh, you can preach a message that talks about the, the things that God does in the dark. Amen. If you're, listen, in, in dark places, uh, you know, we find uh, it easy to become discouraged. I could have easily preached on discouragement tonight. One of the, the chief uh, areas of deception by the devil. Amen. Most folk uh, have uh, been or either are, listen, oppressed or discouraged even sitting in this room right now. Why do you think it's so hard to get people to praise God? Because many times we show up depressed. We show up under the bondage of oppression. We show up under the weight of the world that we believe we carry on our own shoulders. We show up, listen, with all of the reminders in the earth of the works of the devil. And then we would dare allow his works to supersede what God has already done in our lives. Come on, somebody ought to shout, I am delivered. I am delivered. If we believe God. Now, uh, it, it talks about uh, the fact that uh, many uh, of the men that you know that are preachers, and uh, he even talks about how Jesus Christ went through seas, went through a situation in his life where just before he went to the cross, uh, he felt the weight of and the enormity of the task that he had before him, even to the point he prayed to the Father and asked him, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me. Amen. And then you read in the Word of God where, where Paul in situations uh, where he had uh, to deal with all of the people that Listen, he confronted as he was uh, executing the ministry assignment that God had given to his life. And then it talks about, uh, history shows us that some of the greatest preachers by their own admission, huh, talks about the oppression or the depression that they experienced. Uh -huh. It said that, uh, that Charles Spurgeon, who died at age 58, amen, uh, was, was depressed a lot of his ministry. Right? One of the most phenomenal preachers, arguably, that ever lived on the face of the earth. He died uh, at age 58 from uh, tired of fighting, uh, listen, the, uh, the issue of gout that riddled his body. Uh, uh, but he was depressed. But he could preach a word. Amen? But you got to know that it is, listen, if you got a word in your spirit, amen, it's the word that can deliver you from any oppression that you'll ever experience. It's the word that can bring you out of any darkness that you face. See, I believe that, listen, the reason why I folk now, I said what I said about Paul and about Spurgeon, but let me say this to you. The reason why folk would be uh, depressed, uh, it has to do with how much time you spend reading the word of God. Now, I don't know a folk that can read the word and receive the word and emerge from that experience walking around with your head hanging down. Amen. I believe when you've been in the word, you'll emerge from the word, looking to the hills from which cometh your help. 
It's noted, listen, when surveys are taken, it is uh, ascertained that most Christians don't spend an hour, listen, uh, on, in a three-day period studying the Word of God. It's no wonder why saints are oppressed. Saints are depressed. Saints are Listen, walking in the bondage of the deceptions of the enemy when you don't spend time in the Word of God. But those same individuals will spend an average of four and a half hours watching television. Tell your neighbor the devil is alive. Listen, all the, listen, the television will do if you're not studying the Word of God. It'll cause you to get high. Listen on fantasy and low on truth. You don't hear what I'm saying. And because, listen, you're not now living in a fantasy that you saw on television, then you sit in a corner and get mad with God. I dare somebody shout, the devil is alive. Listen, you start declaring, I wonder why it is that all the folk I see on TV living large and in charge, I'm walking around here, listen, looking like a bottom feeder and talking about God show is good. Tell your neighbor, oh yeah, he is good. Anybody here believe that God can do it in your life if you just trust him? This is what the word said. The Bible, listen, gave you a hint. It gave you a clue. It said many are the afflictions of the righteous. Come on, I dare somebody say but. Listen, he didn't, he didn't lie to you. He said you're going through some stuff. Amen. But God said you're not going through by yourself. He said, I'm going to go through with you. That's why the Lord said, listen, David declared, yea, though I walk through. He said, I, David didn't declare, I go through by myself. But David said, thou art. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad I don't have to go through this all by myself. And listen, when you know what the word of God said, listen, I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. Huh? But the Bible said the Lord is right there with me. And if he's there, then that means everything that God has uh, is right there with you. Tell your neighbor, not only do you have access, but tell him, but his blessings are available to you in the valley that you're going through right now. What you mean, preacher? Because the Bible said in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures uh, forevermore. Tell your neighbor you ought to break you off a little of that right about now. Oh, praise God. When you're in your valley, you ought to grab hold uh, of something that God uh, has in store for your life. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to praise him wherever I am. Listen, the Bible declared. Listen, Paul said in whatever state you're found, uh, he said, there will do what? Who came in here with you with a conviction in your spirit? I'm going to listen, be excited about who the Lord is in my life. I'm going to give God praise, uh, listen, for, with such as I have. I didn't come to talk about what I don't have, but listen, what I do have uh, is a praise uh, that I can give unto the God uh, that I serve. My God, I'm going to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary and I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. Is there anybody that came in here tonight with a praise in your mouth? Listen, anybody here can remember where the Lord has brought you from? I dare you declare I am blessed. Listen, let me move on. Take a seat for just a moment. Let me, let me move on. Let me get out of here. Listen, the Lord declared. He says sin will hold us in bondage is what the word says in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. The Bible says, and there, listen, and have no fellowship huh, with the works of darkness, but rather, he said, reprove them. He said don't have no fellowship with darkness. He said, but reprove them. That means don't be hanging out with darkness. It says speak against it. Amen. Listen, renounce it. How shining is what he said. And why would we embrace darkness and take darkness to lunch? Huh? Go to work and grab some darkness and bring it home and it sitting up beside us in the car. Huh? Take it by the drive through and feed it on your way home. Somebody ought to shout, the devil is a liar. Listen, you got to learn. And listen, I'm not going to entertain this stuff in my life. I want God to be glorified in my life. Listen, to say, listen, don't let everything, that's why we have to be careful, the thing that we allow to feed our spirit. A 
Amen. Don't believe and don't embrace everything that you hear. That's why the Lord said, listen, out of the abundance of the heart shall the mouth speak. When you embrace stuff, you have no business. Let me just camp out on that curve just a second. We got to be very, listen, mindful of the stuff that we embrace as we're going through the course of our day. Even when you're looking at, listen, preaching and ministries on television, you got to know the word before you turn the television on. Amen. It'll have you, listen, scratching your head trying to figure out why is it that folk go to the house of God? How folk go to college and take religion courses and come out the course asking crazy questions like, I wonder if God really is God. What's, your, what's wrong with you? Put that verse back on the screen. He told her, listen, don't have no fellowship with darkness. It's foolishness. Huh? Half the people in college teaching this stuff ain't even saved. You are going to listen to it. You better know what you believe before you get in the sin. <laughs> seminary. Glory to God. We would dare spend our time supporting this crazy mess. There's nothing wrong, listen, with getting education and learning. Listen, in seminaries, but just know what the Word of God says before you go. Amen. And while you're there, pray for understanding. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The Bible said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth is what will make you free. Tell your neighbor, I'm standing on the truth from now on. I'm not listening to the lies of the enemy. I'm not having fellowship with darkness, uh, but I'm pursuing the light of the glorious gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. And you know how tricky the enemy is and how cunning and crafty he is because you know that you know the word. He's not going to confront you, faith. Listen, head on. But he's going to try to deceive you, just give you, you know how they will do, a little bit of truth with a whole lot of error. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Huh? He give you just enough truth to entice you, just enough truth to say, well, I think it's okay for me to be a part of this. Amen? And as soon as they reel you, know, reel you in, <laughs> oh, glory to God, all the things that, listen, are inconsistent with the word of God, uh, they'll begin to feed you little by little. To make you believe that there's nothing wrong with the stuff that they're doing. You got to hear what the Lord, that's why the Bible said be careful. Because he said in the latter days, how some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to these are spirits that listen, that love darkness. These are spirits that emanate from the devil. Let me hurry on. I want to share with you, my God, where those spirits come from. Glory to God. To let you know that, listen, this is the work of the enemy. Amen. When you hear what uh, Minister Banks, what the Lord put on his heart that we're here a uh, month down the road in vacation Bible school, to know that we've got to be careful about how we allow the various, this and social organizations that we become a part of. See how quiet it is in here? <laughs> it said reprove this stuff. I didn't say become a part of it. It said reprove it. Glory to God. Listen, whatever you need, you ought to be able to find in the Lord. You don't hear what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Listen, come on, somebody shout, no more. No more. Will I, Will I engage, engage in supporting darkness? Supporting Listen, sin is what holds it. Remember that verse. In verse 11 it says, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, is what the word says. In the Amplified it said, take no part and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness, is what he said. Huh? What's darkness? Anything that, count, that contradicts what the Word of God says. That's what darkness is. Anything that contradicts light is darkness. Amen? Anything that contradicts light is darkness. Is what? Listen, the Word declares. And then it said, not only do, uh, do men love dog, not only does sin hold people in bondage, but third thing is the power of sin flows from the rulers of darkness. Uh -huh. uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, look at what it said in verse number 12. It said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You see that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on, say, it, come on, someone to say that sin comes yeah. from the rulers, the rulers of darkness. Of it said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. Huh? Rulers of the darkness. Amen? Rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness, he said, in high places. Come on, somebody shout, the devil is alive. 
Man, what we're saying is we're not falling for the deceptions of the enemy, but we decree that we're going to allow God to rule and super rule in our lives. Our Lord equips us to win the battle that we're fighting. That's why it says in verse number 10, and listen, if we get down this far, uh, listen, I'm going to close it. It says, Father, my brethren, he said, be strong, not in darkness, but what? In the Lord. Huh? And in the power of his might is what he said. Then he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Yeah. Against the wiles of the devil. How many of y'all have ever, when you read, listen, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, when you read from verse 10 down through verse 18, how many have ever read this and understood that, listen, this is really not just a message about the armor of God. Uh-uh. Tell your neighbor, the armor is nothing but a tool. Uh-huh. Come on, tell your neighbor, the armor is just a tool. Come on, bother your neighbor. Ask him, did you hear what I said? The armor is just a tool. Why do you need the armor? It ain't about the armor. Talk about I got the word. Listen, forget that. You better understand that what the Lord declares is this. This is that lesson is not just about equipping with the word. I told y'all, professors have the word. Huh? But they don't have the spirit of God. You go back and put the message up that pastor was talking to what he read to us. Earlier, the affirmation of faith. Some of us just believe it is nothing but an exercise in wasting time. I wish we could put that thing on the screen. It said, listen, that we believe. Listen, we believe that, listen, the only means, that the only way that we can live, listen, a successful life in this earth is by the Spirit of God. Amen. Listen, the Holy Ghost is not essential for you to get saved. Other than the fact that, listen, other than the fact that it's the Holy Ghost that leads you to the point of salvation to begin with. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Who you think led you to the point where you said, I need God? That wasn't your flesh. That's the Spirit of God. But don't misunderstand the affirmation. Listen, to say that, listen, unless you've been endowed with the Holy Ghost, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can't be saved. That's not what the Word says. Amen. That's not what it says. Listen, but it's the Holy Ghost that, that was, listen, when you were in the middle of your sin. It's the Holy Ghost that told you, child, you know you ain't supposed to be right here. You ain't know what that was. You, you talking about something told me. Tell your neighbor, I know who he is now. You know when you were out there on the club floor getting it on and something told you, get out of the club. That wasn't your flesh. Your flesh said, go ahead and do what you want to do. But the Holy Ghost said, get up, get out of here. Tell your neighbor that was the Spirit of God. Listen, that's what he said. But listen, what he declares is this. It said that it takes the Spirit of God that will cause you to live successfully right here on earth. Tell your neighbor, I need the Spirit of God in my life. That's why David, that's why David declared. He said, whatever you do, don't take your spirit away from me. Glory to God. Can somebody shout, I got the victory right now. Listen, that's what the Lord declared. What he's saying, the saints of God, listen, the text in Ephesians 6 is not just about understanding the armor. That's a powerful lesson. But where the lesson and listen, the key to the lesson is found in verse number, listen, verse number 11. Look at what it says. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Why do you want to put it on? To do what? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, it's not just about the armor. It's about standing. Anybody here, listen, feel compelled that I'm going to stand no matter what the devil says in my life. He told you you were no good. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm going to stand in the house. He told you you were going down. I dare you tell your neighbor, I'm going to stand in the house. What does Paul declare? Paul said, having done all to stand. He said, you've fallen too many times. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm going to stand in the house. Glory to God. Listen, take your seat. I know I told you to stand, but take your seat for just a second. Take your seat. Listen, this is what the Lord declared. The lesson is about standing. Too many people quitting and giving up on God. Huh? But the Lord said, I want you to stand. Even if you don't understand it, he said, stand in the house. 
If you don't feel it, you ought to stand in the house. Let me move on. Hold on one second. Listen. You talking about I'm feeling depressed. God said I want you to stand in this. Listen, take it seat for just a second. We got, we got to move on. This is what the word says. This is what the Lord declared. That Christ is the light. And he always overcomes darkness. He always <laughs> overcomes darkness. Those, listen, who are in Christ. We'll walk in the light. So we said to you, listen, that there is the power of darkness. Come on, someone say the power of darkness. Power of darkness. But watch this, but there's the possibility of deliverance. There's a power of darkness, but there's a possibility of deliverance. Huh? Listen, and we are the saints that have assembled in this room tonight. Huh? Why? We have been redeemed. Redeemed men, I've been brought back. That meant that all the stuff, listen, in the darkness of my life, the Lord, listen, God sent his son to the earth huh, and sent him to the cross so that all of the dark deeds in my life, huh, listen, can be paid for. You don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. So every sin that is repented of, huh, the devil has no right to accuse you of that sin ever again. You don't hear what I'm saying? If you repent it and ask God to forgive you of the darkness. Listen, the Lord said that my blood payment is sufficient for you. Can somebody shout the blood is sufficient? Glory to God. Listen, this is what he said in verse number 14 is what he declared. As we're looking at what the Lord uh, said to us here. Look at what he says in verse number 14. He says, in whom we have what? Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And what does the devil do? He'll tell you, listen, you're not really forgiven. Huh? If you're not, then the, the Bible is a lie. Amen. That's what the word says. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sin. Huh? And if, the, if God has forgiven you, huh, why don't you forgive you? If God has forgotten about what you did. Why don't you forget about what you did? Now, listen, we understand you don't have the capacity, huh, to selectively forget stuff. But you got to learn to remember some stuff without pain. Amen? You got to learn to remember some stuff, huh, without condemnation. Huh? What it should do is what, listen, Pastor Johnson tried to encourage us earlier. When you think back on how, listen, reprobate, how, listen, uh, uh, prone to darkness that you were, and God brought you out, it should allow you then to know the blessings that God uh, has released in your life. Huh? Knowing where you came from, why would we come into the house of God and sit down like, listen, we made it on our own, like we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. And we made it because of our networking ability. We made it because of our own intellectual capacity. Tell your neighbor the devil is alive. Who in here believes that if it were not for the Lord on my side? Listen, I'm talking to some folk, listen, in this room now that can remember where you came from. That can remember how destitute. How depraved, my God, how indebted you were to the darkness of sin. Tell your neighbor, but God. but God. I'm talking about those that know that God has brought you from a mighty long way. And that's why when I show up, listen, I don't even have to be in the house of God. Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord. My soul cries out. Are there any gracious, uh, listen, saints of God in this room that know that if it were not for the Lord on your side, listen, you don't know where you'd be right now. 
this here. There are some folk that came through the same thing you came through. Huh? And they are not even living today. But you, listen, God, listen, you are the benefactor of God's grace, of God's mercy. I dare somebody to shout, I've been redeemed. That meant that God has paid the price so you didn't have to. Some people died in their sins, but God saved you and brought you out. Is there any, listen, redeemed saints in this room? I dare you open your mouth and shout, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are there anybody here that's glad about it? What the Lord has done in your life. I dare somebody give God some glory in. Hallelujah. Take, take your seat one, one last time perhaps. One last time. Listen. Listen. The power of darkness. But the possibility of deliverance. Listen. Deliverance from the bondage, listen, calls. It calls for praise. When you remember, amen, what God's brought you from, it should provoke something. It should evoke something in your spirit. How not only from the power of sin, how have we been delivered? How, but listen, we've also been delivered, listen, from the penalty of sin. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. See, the Bible said that sin no more, listen, has reigned. Over your mortal body. Listen, you may be doing some stuff right now. But guess what? You don't have to do the stuff. When you were in your sin, you had what our mothers told us uh, were the can't help it. But now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, tell your neighbor, oh yeah, I can help it now. Isn't it awesome to know that not only have I been delivered from the power of sin, I feel like screaming in this place. But mother, I've been delivered from the penalty of sin. Tell your neighbor it's already been paid. Oh, praise the name of the God. Listen, listen. But there's a third one as well. Not only the penalty, not only the power and the penalty, but also the pollution of sin. Amen. You've been delivered from. That means that nobody can look at your life and talk about where you used to be. Huh? And hold you accountable for any residue that they perceive that is on your life. Come up to you talking about, I know, listen, what you used to be. Huh? I feel like preaching a message about Rahab. Listen, the title would be, she ain't the girl she used to be. Tell your neighbor, I ain't the, listen, I ain't the person that I used to be. You don't hear what I'm saying. My God, I may have been there one time, but tell your neighbor, the Lord has delivered me. Anybody here standing in the power of God's deliverance, you ought to give God some glory. Let me, let me hurry on here. Let me hurry on here. Listen, the power of deliverance is what the word says. To know that, listen, the Lord says, he reminds us that the count has already been settled. Uh -huh. huh? And nothing can be brought up against those of us by the devil. Listen, listen, if we've been redeemed, yes. uh -huh. we can declare, listen, the blood of Jesus Christ over any lie the enemy ever tells against us. Huh? At this point in our life. Anybody glad about that today? Uh -huh. Huh? If the promise of the living was given all the way back in at the Garden of Eden in, in Genesis chapter 3. In verse number 15, and the payment for our deliverance was made at Calvary. Yeah. Glory to God. Aren't you glad about that today? Yeah. Listen, and the reason for this, if you look at verse number 15 in the text that, uh, that we were reading, it says, who is the image of the invisible God? Yeah. Huh? The firstborn of every creature. Huh? For by him all things created. Huh? Yeah. Were all things created, it said, that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Come on, somebody shout. Listen, when you listen, remember this, you know that there was, listen, uh, the power of darkness. Uh -huh. Amen. And then to realize this, what the Lord declared, that there is the possibility of deliverance. But the thing that we are excited about is that we have a perfect deliverance. Uh -huh. Amen. There's no failure, no fault in the deliverer that brought us out. There's nothing the 
devil can do, listen, to rail accusations against the deliverer that brought us out of our sins. We have a perfect deliverer. Anybody here glad about the fact that you're a deliverer? Listen, the Bible said that he is the image huh, of the invisible God. I'm telling you, he said that, that when Jesus came to earth, he is the embodiment, listen, of the man that the text said, huh, that all things were created by him. By him. This is what the word says, that are in heaven and that are in earth. And then it, it talks about this, it said that he is before all things. It said he didn't just create some, uh, listen, a uh, mundane or uh, earthly, a middle of the road, huh, deliverance. But this is God in the flesh. You don't hear what I'm saying. That's the one that delivered us. So where would that be? Huh? Anything left? How for God to do or for Jesus to do as he came to deliver us? I want you to realize what deliverance you have in your life. Oh, praise God. Listen, I heard uh, Pastor Johnson singing a song. He said, listen, that, that he opened up the way. Huh? He gave us and brought us to salvation. Huh? And he opened up the way. Then he asked us a question. He said, what more could he do? You serve a Savior that has done everything that you need him to do. And if he's done everything that you need him to do, why don't we do what he desires us to do? Tell your neighbor, since I am delivered, I may as well give God the praise. I may as well 